Thanks for joining me on episode 1022 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Julio Mojaro, and I challenge you to invest in yourself, invest in others, develop your influence, and impact the world by using your time, your talent, and your treasures to live out your calling. Having the ability to develop yourself is key, and one way to be inspired is to do is Having the ability to develop yourself is key, and one way to be inspired to do that is to listen to this, the Inspired Studentship Podcast with my very good friend, Scott Mader. And by the way, tax collectors were as hate as then as they are now. He, he's actually saying if you have a position of authority, take care of the people that you have authority over. Don't abuse them. Live with a spirit of generosity. If you have extra, share it with others. Live in community with each other. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's Spiritual Foundation episode about investing in others, I talk with you about Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. I share how John's message is more joy than anger, even though it calls people out. I also share how this still applies to us today. Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18 begins like this. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. You know, this is being recorded during the Advent season, the season of waiting in anticipation of Christmas, of the coming time. And you know, the truth is, this season is always hard on me because there's gray skies, there's rain, there's cold, there's the busyness of the holiday. I have some personal reasons why Christmas is always a difficult holiday for me in terms of some family loss and history of different stressful things that always come up around this time of the year. And the truth is, it's dreary, and yet underneath it, there's still joy. Now, I will be honest, that's something that I struggled to find for many years, but now I'm able to see that underneath it, there's still joy. There's this persistent, transforming joy. And Christmas isn't really about that temporary joy of the season or the joy you get whenever you get a really cool gift or the joy that we have around other things, but rather it's a reminder, at least the intent is, that it's a reminder 
that this joy is always ours, that we have but to look for it. But sometimes we need a little calling out, a little kick in the pants, a little pointer to remind us of that. And that's what this message from John is. I I know when I read this passage, I hear what sounds like anger, not what sounds like joy. I, I hear like this idea of calling people out. It begins with you brood of vipers, which is a pretty strong <laughs> statement. And yet it's also a message of joy. It ends with many other exhortations. He proclaimed the good news to the people. And I always think it's funny whenever the Bible says things like that, because it immediately makes me think, wait, whoa, whoa, wait, what are you leaving out? What else did he say? What else did he call out? What else did he point out as something that people weren't doing? The truth is, this is good news, but it's also good news because what John is doing is pointing out the comparison, the the fact that there's bad news. Because the truth is, without badness, we wouldn't see the goodness either. We, We have to know that things are rough sometimes to be able to recognize when things get better. In fact, he, he's calling people out for thinking they're special, they're children of Abraham, but they're really not special. And it I don't know about you, but when people call me out, my first instinct is to push back and say, wait, that's not true. But in this case, they say, what then should we do? What should our response be? They don't say that's not true. They don't say this is horrible. They say, what should we do? And John actually gives them hope. He doesn't look at them and say, you're out of luck. You've screwed up so badly that this is just going to be the end for you. Instead, he points out to different people what they should do. And what he sums it up as is bear fruit, as in live it out, live out the good news. If you're a soldier, look for justice. If you're a tax collector, look for fairness. Don't abuse your power. Don't threaten others. And by the way, tax collectors were as hated then as they are now. He, he's actually saying, if you have a position of authority, take care of the people that you have authority over. Don't abuse them. Live with a spirit of generosity. If you have extra, share it with others. Live in community with each other. Not to earn repentance. Yes, it says bear fruit worthy of repentance, but not really to to earn it, but do it because you understand it, because you've decided this and now you're living it out. Because you have repented, you will bear fruit worthy of repentance. The repentance causes the fruit, not the other way around. The truth is, it's letting us know that there is a moment of joy even in this moment of, quote, calling people out. This isn't a a statement that it's our job to go around and call people out. That's not what I'm saying. And in fact, usually when we do that, what we discover is often the very thing that we're seeing and irritated by and calling out in others in some way is present in our life as well. Instead, this is a call for you to recognize where you should be called out. Where are you needing the good news in your life? Where are you needing to give something up so that next year, so that the next week, so that tomorrow, so that in the next few minutes, your life is better and living more in community, more in generosity, more in an authority that is fair as opposed to tyrannical. Where are you meant to live out the message of Advent and the message of joy? Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. 
If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor. Go over to facebook.com slash inspired stewardship and like our Facebook page and mark it that you'd like to get notifications from us so that we can connect with you on Facebook and make sure that we're serving you to the best of our abilities with time and tips there. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures. Develop your influence and impact the world.